Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 48.9k subscribers. Let's try to get to 50k by election day. Please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. And today we have no choice but to talk about last night and uh, what, what a night that was. Kind of a mess actually. And I think I was right. Me and Trump were just a few of the only people saying don't underestimate Biden. He's probably not going to implode in the debate. And uh, they want you to set the bar low for Biden. I'm not saying Biden had a good performance, but I think I was right in my assessment. So we can add that to the list of the many predictions of mine in the past that have actually come into fruition. And again, I'm not sure that this moved the needle. And I'm going to get into this. But I don't believe it moved the needle at all. I don't believe it moved the needle realistically in favor of Donald Trump. I don't believe that it moved the needle in favor of Biden. This was a game about trying to rile up your base and if you look at that, then yes, Donald Trump is the de facto winner of the debate. Uh, the betting odds are showing Trump falling. That doesn't mean he necessarily ended up losing the debate, in my opinion, but he didn't perform well enough that a lot of people were hedging their bets on the debate. So a lot of the betting odds are going to start to reflect the polling which is fine. That's roughly expected, and we'll see what happens. But again, we'll talk about the um, rhetoric surrounding the debate. Uh, Donald Trump, he interrupted a lot. He interrupted. Although, technically, Biden interrupted too, and Wallace interrupted quite a bit himself. He was not exactly the bipartisan moderator he was back in 2016. He was full force ahead attacking Trump. He had a big, clear favorite in that debate, and Biden interrupted too. But Trump did interrupt a lot, but he didn't start it. And Biden was weak, sheepish. Trump did everything possible to rattle his cage, and it was kind of effective. And Trump had the zingers. He said, you shouldn't be using the word smart because you don't know what he talked about, how Biden graduated in the bottom of his class, which is true. And Biden lying about that was the big reason why Biden ended up losing the 1988 nomination. It kind of sunk his campaign. He really didn't have that much of a chance anyways. But again, it was a sloppy product altogether. No matter what side you're on, the left is agreeing with this. The right is agreeing with this. Comparing it to like a football game, it was a 21 to 21 tie. But Biden had a lot of opportunities and he didn't really take advantage of them. Donald Trump did take advantage of what he could. 21-21 tie, but again, different methods of scoring. Biden kicked a a lot of field goals. Trump got the big plays. Trump got the touchdowns. And when you're trying to energize your base to come out and vote, because this is a turnout election, Donald Trump may have been the winner by default, no matter what. Again, a lot of missed opportunities for Biden. And Chris Wallace lost control. And again, that's his fault. Donald Trump can test the moderator. He can test Biden. But if you're the moderator and you're losing control, you don't get to play the victim here. That's all on you. Chris Wallace lost control of his debate, and that speaks volumes to how poor of a moderator Chris Wallace was. And again, Biden was not innocent either on this. He interrupted Trump many times. He called Trump a clown. He told the president of the United States to shut up. There was a lack of respect. There was a lack of mutual respect. And uh, that's what we have nowadays in politics, but that's just the way it is. And they hate Trump so irrationally that Trump was never going to get the respect no matter what, the Republican Party was never going to get the respect until they got rid of Trump and go back to business as usual, neocon, neolib, false dichotomy BS. And that's exactly what Biden plays to. That's why he has people like Kasich and the neocon McCain crew all in for Biden. That's why that's the case. Um, but that's it for rhetoric. We'll talk a little bit more about controversies later, but now we'll talk about policy because there were several policies that were highlighted. First off was the Supreme Court and Biden pivoted. He highlighted health care, and that was a good thing for Biden. I'll give Biden credit because health care and COVID, those are winning issues for the Democrat Party this election. Donald Trump's winning issue is the economy and law and order. And I will tell you this, Biden cannot have it both ways with the economy. He did tell a lot of false truths. He said, we had a booming economy when I left office, and that's not true. The GDP growth in 2016 was like 1.6%. Manufacturing jobs were in the negatives. And the bottom line is economy is Trump's winning issue. Biden criticizing Trump for a tanking economy and criticizing him for not closing up enough due to COVID when Biden had said he wanted to shut down the country again, and then he lied about it again at the debate, ironically enough. It doesn't sit well because you can't have it both ways. You either pick the economy or you pick shutdowns. You cannot have it both ways. 
And again, Biden didn't answer the court packing question. This is a big one. Trump needs to hammer him for this because court packing is extremely unpopular. Ruth Bader Ginsburg herself was opposed to court packing. Court packing was floated by some of the more radical characters in the Democrat primary. Biden hasn't exactly floated it yet himself. But if Barrett gets through and Biden says he wants to court pack, it's probably not going to bode well, especially because even Biden was giving a little bit of praise here and there to Barrett in the debate because she's a very, very presentable, very fair model minded judge, according to a lot of people, even in the media. So attacking her on, you know, extreme views or whatever, isn't going to play out that well this cycle. And again, I think Trump handled the abortion thing very well. He's like, we don't, you don't know what she's going to vote like on Roe. And Biden kind of stumbled a little bit. That was good. So the Supreme Court kind of a, you know, a wash in terms of the issue. And the whole debate was a wash, by the way. But in terms of health care, COVID, Biden gets those keys. Trump will get the economy. Law and order. Again, Biden decided to pivot to the Senate. Center, but that doesn't work. That's what Hillary Clinton did in the debates in 2016. Didn't work for her. And Biden kind of pissed off some of the far left with some of his pro-police rhetoric. And Donald Trump said, and, you know, he whispered into the debate, he's like, yeah, you shouldn't have said that. You're going to piss off the far left. And it's true. Even though they're not a big segment of the electorate, Donald Trump did end up winning on the issue. Trump won on the environment, in my opinion, which was huge because he is a Republican. He highlighted the fact that he did things like tax incentives for electric cars. He acknowledged that uh, climate change is partially man-made. And that's exactly what he needed to do because Republicans have historically struggled on the issue and he hit Biden for the unpopular Green New Deal. Biden said he didn't support it, then he defended it, then he said he didn't support it again. He kind of tripped him up. But again, Biden in policy has all but endorsed it, literally every single segment of it except for the thing specifically by name. But I will say this, there were a lot of important issues lacking, issues that Trump has the upper hand on. Immigration, that issue was lacking. Foreign policy, trade. These are all key important issues. They were important issues in 2016. They're still important now. And we didn't talk about them. So I hope at the second and third debate, we actually get to cover those topics. Now we'll get to the controversies. Biden had a lot of lies. People like to say Trump tells all these false statements, but we've counted at least 33 false statements for Joe Biden in this debate alone. Wallace would not call him out on it. Again, pushing the fine people hoax. Again, pushing the Atlantic military hoax and lied when he was confronted on the fact that he called soldiers stupid bastards. It could have been in jest. Doesn't matter. Still disrespectful. He dodged the Ukraine situation. Uh, he lied about the Russian bounty hoax. Again, no Americans died per the Wall Street Journal. Blown out of proportion. He lied about his son's first job being in Ukraine, lied about that as well. And Donald Trump wasn't perfect either. He did lie. He said he got the Portland Sheriff's endorsement. He didn't. Maybe he was talking about Maine or some other Portland. I don't know. But we have to talk about what everyone's talking about, which leads me to believe that Donald Trump did not lose this debate because everybody is talking about some other Trump controversy instead of Biden's performance because Biden was sheepish. He was not really that good. He was stumbling through his words like he always does. And that's not a good thing because debates are about zingers. They're about presentation. They're not entirely about policy. But again, policy was a wash. Trump got the zingers, but he kind of looked like a showman. He kind of looked like he was being a little bit too bold, a little bit too brash. But again, that's how he won in 2016. He's a showman. So that's the kind of thing that appeals to people like me that are voting for Trump in this election cycle and why we pulled the lever for him back in 2016. But the thing that everyone's talking about, they're saying that Donald Trump refused to denounce white supremacy, which again is false. If you want to look at what's actually said, we can pull up the tweet here uh, from me where I basically broke it down. Chris Wallace said, would you be willing to condemn white nationalists, white supremacists, the militias, which again, were not all violent or white supremacist. And Donald Trump said, sure, I would be willing to do that. But most of the violence I see is from the left, not from the right, which is true. A lot of Antifa violence, a lot of BLM protests get way too out of hand. Again, the report that said 93% are peaceful showed that 7% of BLM protests are violent. And in that report, by doing the math, that would be over 800 different protests were riots. That's a lot of riots. And again, how is this not an appropriate response? I have no idea how this was some bad response. Donald Trump said, sure, I would be willing to do that. So essentially, he's condemning them. And it's not like Trump hasn't condemned them in the past. He condemned them today by name, by word. He condemned them like thousands of times throughout his presidency. He condemned them at Charlottesville where the media says he didn't. 
It's part of his 2020 presidential campaign agenda to label the Ku Klux Klan a terrorist organization. It's ridiculous. It's completely insane and preposterous, taking things out of proportion because that's all they have. But Biden's the one that won't denounce them. Biden's the one that won't denounce Antifa. He's a hypocrite. Antifa is doing a lot of violent actions. There are a lot of the provocateurs are Antifa. They're in Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington. They literally took over part of Seattle and the mayor and the governor just let them do it. There's a lot of hypocrisy there. And Biden wants to play the Proud Boys card and he's calling Antifa just an idea, but the Proud Boys are a hate group. Uh, yeah, that's what the left likes to do. They like to downplay Antifa. They're like, oh, it just means anti-fascist. Well, they're being hypocrites. By that logic, proud boys are just people that are proud to be a boy. And then uh, you're a fascist if you disagree because people that stormed the beaches of Normandy were technically proud boys or whatever. We could play that game. It's a dumb game to play. But either way, the proud boys are not white supremacists. They're not white nationalists. They're barely even a militia. They're just Western chauvinists. Their president is a minority. I think he's black and Cuban. There's a lot of black Proud Boys, a lot of Cuban Proud Boys, a lot of Indian Proud Boys. In fact, the Proud Boys are far more diverse than Antifa, yet the Proud Boys get called the white supremacist group. It's pretty funny. In fact, they're probably more diverse than a lot of the BLM chapters you see, especially in places like Seattle, places like Oregon, etc. It's insane. They're going to call Donald Trump the racist? Donald Trump is literally proposing reparations with his platinum plan. This is not an argument they want to have. In fact, I've criticized Trump. I think he's going a little overboard, especially because he is dedicating a disproportionate amount of outreach to communities who are not really going to vote for him and that are going to vote for the Democrats the way that some dictators in third world countries win their elections by insane margins. So that's the way it is. But the media is hysterical, and they're stretching the truth, and they're lying, and it's sad. But that's the way it is. It's just a mess. Nothing's going to change. Nothing changed whatsoever. Snap polls showed it being narrower than the first debate in 2016. But again, I debunked snap polls in my latest video. We don't know what's going to happen. I think it's a total and complete wash, and we're just going to have to see. It's going to come down to turnout. Get everyone you know registered. Get out and vote. That's the only way we're going to beat Biden. Nobody's minds are changing. This is just the way it is. It's going to come down to turnout. So turn out every single person you know. Take 5, 10, 20, 50, or even 100 people to the voting booth on November 3rd. Let's get this done. Let's do this, and we can do it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Become a member. Donate to the Patreon or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.